Real Fitness Viper Strength Games. Well, here we have Andres. He's going to help us out today. And he's a kinesiology major at a California State School. So uh, he's never done Viper tubes before. And theoretically, we'd have him go back to the blue routine and learn the Viper tubes. And, but we're not. We're just going to go right into this green routine, which we're getting country strong now. We're going to really kind of get the fascial networks uh, upregulated and strong like a farmer, like a real country strong person. And uh, the blue routine was more movement preparation and all that. So we're just going to introduce ourselves to the Viper tubes yet again. And for Andres, probably kind of the first time here, basically. Right. And so this first tube has got a six on it. So he's just going to pick it up and he's going to see what this is all about. And you at home, if you have your own tubes or you're in a gym with a lot of different tubes, great on you. Uh, so he's kind of, you know, whatever we can do with that thing. So six, that's kilograms, 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Do the math, 13 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So put that back down. Now he's going to pick this one. If it's got eight, do the math, folks, 2.2. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> so it's, it's heavier, right? I mean, it's yeah. definitely heavier, definitely right? Heavier. All right, let's put that one down. Now 10. All right, now do me a favor now, Anders, let's pick the tube up, and I want you to kind of shift it out to the side, towards, and then towards me. And there we have it. So you can see that the tube is outside his base of support. This is his base of support, and when he picks the tube up again, go ahead, and he shifts it, the center of mass of the tube is like right here, but it's outside the base of support, which is there. So that's important, and that's what shift training is versus lift training, and we're really going to go uh, downtown with that today. And again, we have a 12. Uh, don't worry about picking that up, but I might play with you later and have fun <laughs> with you, okay? So without further ado, folks, Viper Strength Games, green routine, here we go. Wide hold bazookas. So we're going to warm the body up here. And we're going to pick up our lightest tube that we have. And this is the neutral position, folks. And a bazooka is, uh, I can do it a couple ways. I can go out with my left foot, put it over my right shoulder with this neutral grip. And that's easy. It's not too bad. What if I put it over the same shoulder? So if my left foot out, over the left shoulder, and that's camera right to you guys at the home viewing audience. This is a little bit harder. I get a little more twist in my thoracic spine. We're gonna warm up that thoracic spine. What if I pick the tube up, seam up? Rub your thumbs on that seam for the seam up. That's the strongest geometry in this tube. And then what if I put left foot out over left shoulder, which is the hardest orientation we just learned? Boom. I really open up this thoracic spine. That's it. That's it. So uh, let's go right into All right. So he's gonna go right into the hardest orientation first. So we like holding the tube with the seam up. There's a seam right here, and it's it's the continuous part of the tube. And that's the strongest geometry, so we don't break the tube. And he's going to go with his left foot out over his left shoulder. And quite a turn in that thoracic spine, isn't it? Yep. And you can do four to one side, four to the other, eight to one side, eight to the other. He's alternating back and forth. That looks pretty good. Oh, the stuff. Ah, screwed up, right? Yeah. So you're going to want to do that. The body's going to want to screw up and do the opposite leg. Good, I'm really glad you screwed that up. Yeah. That's fantastic. Now face me and do that, so we can just All right. home viewing audience, we've got another orientation of this. And uh, why don't we do four, let's do four the easy way. Okay, All so right. it's gonna go over his right shoulder, left foot comes out. All right. That's the easy way, folks. Then uh, uh, alternate, keep on going, the easy way. And we'll do uh, four total. This is a good way to kind of work into it folks, especially this wide hold bazooka. Now, give me the hardest orientation and we'll just do again, do four, left, left, 
Boom. Nice, good lunge pattern here. That thoracic spine's really opening up. And we're moving that tube through a field of gravity over the shoulder. And that's just a great way to warm up, folks. And these are wide hold bazookas. Shovels, these are games, we're just pretending. So, again, I can pick up uh, my lightest tube here, and I'm gonna hold it with an off-center bit. We really didn't do that in the blue routine, but in the green routines, we do kind of do it off-center. And really what I'm just, it's just a, a simple pattern where I'm just gonna step in, pretending I'm shoveling a load of dirt, and then I'm just gonna throw it over my back shoulder, maybe a little bit of a twist in there. And then with that nice twist, I'm kind of twisting my fascial networks. And again, it's kind of a nice warm up as I shift. And again, this is the grip, I'm holding it on the end and on that bit of the handle. Okay, so let's just try it, Andres. Not that hard. So I start out with his left foot, take a load of dirt, and kind of throw it over the shoulder. Scoop. We'll just do four. And four. That's it. Yeah, not bad, right? Yeah. Let's try on the other side, okay? Keep the body even. Again, it's off center. This bit is the off center part of the shovel. Goes in, scoops it. And if you want to understand, maybe look towards me a little bit. All right. No, no. So go ahead and do the same right. orientation. But after you shovel, just when you come around, maybe look over your back shoulder a little bit and see what that does to your torso. So right. Feel that twist? Yep. Nice twist, isn't it? Yep. So we can get two variations here, folks. We can just do it straight ahead, right over the shoulder, or we can put a little twist into that. Okay? Um, now, Let's play with heavier stuff. So right. let's go right to the 10 and just see how that feels. So here we go, just give maybe. Uh, is nope. this correct? So, so no, this, this is going to be our heavy okay. end. So the left, so if the heavy bit is in the left hand, that's the side. I see. And then you put it over the left shoulder. Now, he's. This is four kilograms more, but this thing is traveling through space outside of his body, outside the base of his port. So it's going to be a little bit more load and just kind of look over that left shoulder for a little bit of that twist, okay? All right. All right, and it's that simple. All right, we got it, right? Yeah, maybe for this side, just keep you even. And I like these progressions when we learn these patterns, especially if someone hasn't done it before. Uh, we just introduce them to the lighter patterns and we move up. Pick up this 12 kilo thing. You haven't picked that thing up yet. Not yet. Not yet. Let's see. Wow, what a difference, huh? Yeah. What a difference. So now we got real heavy loads here. And it's okay just to look maybe forward first on this guy, get it, get it set before you put that little twist in there because you gotta be really careful now with these bigger loads. Maybe you just wanna keep the plane of motion a little more simple. So maybe I really don't even wanna put that twist in here now, right? Just keep it straight ahead, right? Again, the heavier the load, the more simple the motions and as a general rule. What a difference, huh? Yeah. A lot tougher. A lot tougher. So now he's getting a workout. So before it was just kind of a warm up, but now we can actually load up. And trust me, folks, uh, I love Viper tubes for training tactical athletes. That's you, military, you, uh, police, you, firefighters, first responders. Uh, this is great stuff to get the body uh, that country strong, I call it, which is kind of military, you know, tactical strength strong, and that's what we like. So. Uh, Shovels. Gladiator blocks. 
That's a game, huh? So, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to pretend I've got some big eight-foot gladiator guy with an axe that's going to want to chop me in half, and I've got to block him from chopping me in half, so I'm just going to, boom, turn into a pattern. So we'd like to have this movement through space with our feet, and uh, it's almost like a 45-degree punch, boom, as I block that, and then I come back to center. Neutral grip. Nothing fancy. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to have him uh, block his gladiator to his left for four. He's just going to step and block. So we can see with that weight away from his body, that's quite a bit of torque on the shoulders and on his core musculature as we get country strong. The other way now? Yeah, come All towards right. me. And I'm, boom, I'm the gladiator trying to kill him. Boom, that's it. Three, and he steps out, right? Uh, looks good. Solid. Well, you know what we're gonna do. So I have him jump right to the 10. All right. So again, we're normally getting his, his system ramped up. And give me four to the left with that heavier tube. And you can play along at home, folks. And progress with Andres. How's it feel on the shoulders, okay? Yeah, feels good. All right, feels good as long as he has enough strength in there. So now let's come this way now. And again, we can do eight to each side, folks. Simply eight's our number. But it's since we're playing with so many different loads here and different loads, and we just want to give him a workout and have him get introduced to these Viper tubes. Wow, okay. <sighs> breathing, good. I like to say that he's breathing. He's a former endurance athlete. Good, so we can get a guy breathing like that. All right. Be careful. I would caution here, keep it closer in. Just do a little punch out, right? Okay. And don't, and don't, so we can control the torque, especially with this type of load. But again, we can introduce the body to bigger loads. What a difference, huh? Yeah. Notice how his body's almost more vertical now. I mean, he didn't really want to go and give a good deep uh, side, you know, lunge pattern here. Because he's trying to, his body's kind of dialing in, trying to protect it. So that's the point, when you get these really heavy loads, folks, uh, you know, you can limit the range of motion a little bit, make it a little more shallow, and then uh, when you want to go deeper, go lighter and find your sweet spot. But, gladiator blocks. <laughs> Narrow alley, up and over. Where do I come up with, I don't know these names, Make no sense probably, <laughs> but pretend we're in a very narrow, narrow alley here. And let's pretend I am in the uh, US Army or US Marine Corps, and I've got a, got a load of ammo in this very narrow, narrow alley, and I've got to get it up over my head and put it down to the other side so my buddy can continue it and do a chain down the alley here. Okay, so that's kind of an artificial construct. But then maybe I want to bring it back. I don't know. So we're just going to maybe put it back and forth. Notice how I get down low, low, low. And I use the leg to roast beef back here to lift that thing up and over the head, just clear the head, and go back and put it. And then I might just get into a rhythm. All right. And we'll probably do this two directions. So one in the same direction, Andres, that I just did. Neutral grip. Neutral grip, yeah. Keep it simple. Okay, so start low on his left side. Notice which hand, so it just flows right over his body. And he puts it right on next to his left foot down there. Now, don't put it so far out, keep it close in. Keep it close in up and over, and your arms don't have to be straight. So just clear the head. Just clear the head. So we don't want to lock out any joints, but to keep that muscle under tension. How's that feel, all right? Yeah, feels new. Okay, feels new, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me turn uh, face me now, so we get a side angle on you, so you in the home viewing audience can see what it looks like from the side. So again, you notice that squat pattern where 
We're using the legs to get it up and over. Okay, too easy. Here. Ooh. So you get the routine, folks. I'm kind of bypassing this eight, going right to the 10. So a six to a 10, that's a four kilo difference, and then only a two kilo more with this big tube. But I want him to feel that. And what if I kind of double counted that, right? So that's, yeah, so it's kind of one, one, two, two, three, three, like that. So if you double count that to eight, boy, you can see how that might get you a little gas, didn't it? Okay? So put that down. Come on, you're going to be a real kinesiology stud. And here we go. Let's pick up that. Oh, my goodness. So again, uh, here we go. So we're going to double count this for four, and that's one, one. Quite a load, right? Oh, yeah. Two. Where are you kind of feeling it? Anywhere? All over? Yeah, mostly my shoulders. Shoulders. Maybe the ribs there too. And then of course your glutes are trying to get it up. Yep. Three. Three. And four. And back to four. You breathing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're breathing, right? That's all it takes, especially with those heavier loads. Boy, you can really get that heart jacked right up real quick. Simulate uh, real world battlefield situations or games in your head or whatever you want to think about. There it is. We got it. Narrow alleys up and over. Usain Bolt. Well, fastest man in the world. But boy, do we love what he kind of showed off at the end and showed his world record times, didn't we? So let's kind of play with that concept. I am now going to hold it with this offset again, folks. We can see it on the end and right there, just offset from the neutral, right? And so I've got an off-center load. And with our gladiator blocks, we stepped into our guy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this pattern is we're just going to step away. And what are we doing? Again, I've got an off-center load out there. That's the idea. And with that off-center load, what's happening, right? It's like a crane arm, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So I like to hold the weight of that tube into this bottom hand, right? So this thing just kind of guides it a little bit. And when I give you that heavier tube, you're really going to want to be careful of that, right? So boom, that's my Usain Bolt. Boom, that's all it is, okay? Let's try that. Let's get warmed up. All right. So again, just another complimentary foot pattern from our gladiator blocks. And we gotta hold it right first though, sir. Oh, that's right. So off center, there and there, okay? So he's gonna what, step towards me as he points that scoreboard. And I like having that bottom hand, just kind of keep it tight in. Maybe not, yeah, keep that elbow tucked in, that chicken wing tucked in there. And stay there, Andres. Now, try to have almost all the weight here in this hand and very little here. Feel that difference? Oh, yeah. You feel that load there? Oh, boy, is that a big torque on that shoulder? Be careful. Load it here now. Boom. Feel that difference? Yeah. Okay. Everybody out there, if you, if you do this big torque arm out there, watch that shoulder. Mm -hmm. You want to get the shoulder strong, but we don't want to torque it out, do we? Okay? Right. So I like to say keep it. Now, I'll switch it and do towards my direction here, so he's going to step away from me, right? And Boomy points to our scoreboard up here, about a 45 degree angle. Most of the weight now is in his bottom left hand. And then I just kind of, whatever, you know, that foot, he's kind of turning his foot out a little bit. It can go straight ahead. Right. Well, cool. you know what's That's coming. Good. You know what's coming. Should I do the 10? Yeah, do the 10. I always like uh, just progressing, folks. Just progress. Telegraph to the body. Don't yourself set yourself up for injury, ever. And just get the neural patterns down, get the strength patterns down. And again, we're showing four reps for these because we're doing a lot of different variations. But that's going to be enough. Now, does that feel like a good load to you? Yeah, feels good. 
you're good to go up. And your client says, no, I think uh, if their if they're yellow lights are going off in their head saying, I think I kind of want to stay here. Stay there. Don't, yeah. don't keep on progressing them. So dealer's choice. You want to go up or is that good? Yeah, I'll try it. We'll try it. Okay. I think the range of motion will just be less. Yeah. And again, we've seen that before, right? When it gets too heavy, the range of motion kind of shuts down a little bit. Now, you really want to put that load in this bottom hand, don't you? Yeah. Especially these heavier loads. And he's going to get it worked out today. Good. And that's three. And that's four. Those are Usain Bolts. Flip to lunge. Oh, it's easy, folks. If you have the skill. Watch out, I'm coming your way, sir. All right. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna hold the tube with my fingertips right there, this top little cutout. And the tube is gonna be uh, under me. I'm in a kind of a hip hinge squat pattern, right? Think of those kettlebells and all that sort of good hip hinge stuff that we do. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm really just gonna flip the tube up, whoop, boom, and step out into a lunge. And then let it flip right back. Flip out, boom, into a lunge. And I'll do the other side now. Flip out, boom. Go on back, flip out, and I grab it. And it just flips around my fingertips here. See that? Just flips right around the fingertips. I'll do that without any lunge. Easy, right? I'll do it. Make it look easy. I'll do it into camera. Well, straight into camera. How about that? Let me try that. Okay. So, tail down, head up. Boom. Other side. Boom. Good luck. All right, let's see it. So, it's about timing and a little bit of skill. I'm gonna try first with the lunge and see how. Yeah, just try. Ooh, oh, so, right away without the lunge, the lunge helps you get it up, so you know you have to have a little momentum there. Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's try with the lunge. So this is the mass. The center of mass is out here. It's an angular momentum that you have to play with. Good. And then like go right back. Two. Three. Remember when you hold that tube away from you? Look at that core, what's going on there. It's a lot easier with the lunge. A lot easier with the lunge. And, it's, and you really want to get that tube vertical once you get it out there, don't you? Maybe one more, that's good. Now seriously, folks, I don't think I've had a client do that right the first time. And he kind of pissed me off here that he did, but I give him a lot of credit. Uh -oh. So uh, excellent, good job. So seriously, good job on that. Um, let's uh, pick up the 10, see what that feels like. And we will not have you do it with the. So maybe do an angle this way now, right. just because you did it like a 45 there, just so we can see it from the different perspective from the home viewing audience. And you got to really get the thing up and around, don't you? Yeah. Maybe keep it a little closer to your body when you get out there, not straight arms out. Keep those elbows bent. There you go. Notice how he's just flipping around his fingertips. That tube is just flipping around. You just grab it. And we can do four to one leg, four to the other leg. You can do it alternating, whatever you want. But that looks great. We should see that nice, you know, tail down, that nice good lumbar there. Look at that, boom! Protect that lumbar. And what you got, what's your number there? He's just going to town on this. He really likes this stuff. See, it's kind of fun. So you can kind of show off to your friends and family and the, the other folks in the gym. Um, with a tube flip, but uh, Andres, excellent job, my friend. Thank you, thank you.
Tube lift to side lunge. Well, in the blue section, Andres would have learned a tube lift, but he's going to learn it right. Uh, so we're just going to review from the blue section, folks. And it's the last exercise in the blue section. So I just hold the tube. And remember, the tube has these bits where it just goes all the way around, 360, all the way around with no cutout, right? I have 100% tube all the way around. This is one, two, three, four, okay? So I'm just gonna review the tube lift and I'll do it right in front of the camera and into the side. And we just kind of piston the legs. As I go down, I throw it up, catch it at two. Throw it up, catch it at three. Throw it up, catch it at four. Throw it up, catch it at two. Throw it up, two, one. And I'm pistoning my legs. And every time I throw it up, I catch it, I piston right down. I'll do it from the side, folks. Here we go. And one, two, three, three, two, one. So I'm using the legs and just clawing, right? So I'm just gonna have Mr. Andres do it one to two and just back and forth. Go ahead, my friend. Now, uh, and I want you to show, we'll show it so the home audience can see where these cutouts are. And then one, two, three, and four. We're just gonna go one, two, and back and forth, okay? And just try to get a, a piston rhythm with the legs. Two, throw it up. Yeah, so when the legs throw it up, it's okay, right? Yeah. And all you have to do is clamp it with your like anterior deltoid, the bicep, the pec, you know, all that sort of stuff is working, right? Okay, take a rest. So now we're gonna watch him do one, two, three, two, one. We'll do that twice, okay? Two, three, Two, one. Two, three, two, one. Sweet. What'd you notice about three? Anything? Uh, it just takes more coordination, focus. Um, and why did it take more focus? Well, the center of mass of the tube is here in the middle, right, folks? And if I hold it from here, my ship is real bottom heavy. And I like that. Right? We like a bottom heavy ship. It keeps us stable, right? What if my ship and I'm top heavy? I just capsized. Uh -huh. So if the center of mass is above where you hold it, trust me folks, the load is really gonna increase, right? So with that in mind, sir, let's go from one all the way to four and back twice. And then down there, he's got a top heavy ship at three and four, right? Mm -hmm. He's got a bottom heavy ship at one and two, but at three, it's a top heavy. And it's really top heavy. Three, two, one. Do it again. Two, three, four. Oh, he's fighting at that four, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, I skipped one. Beautiful. So, perfect demonstration where at that four, you really got to keep that two vertical, throw it up vertical. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into our exercise though. So make sure your clients or you know this skill first before we do our green section viper tube. So if I were just pissing in place, right? That's all we were doing. So just go one to two folks at the beginning. And what I want to do is I just want, when I, when I squat and I throw it up, boom, boom. And let's just keep it to one side, Andres. Boom, okay? So I'm just uh, going eight to one side, eight to the other. We'll just do maybe four. Okay. Get the pattern one to two. So um, once I catch so, up two, do I reset? Yeah, so you're gonna hold it at one. And then as I squat, I'm gonna throw it up. Boom, catch it at two. Throw it up. Boom, catch it at one. Oh, I see. Okay. Two, one. Two, one. Okay, gotta use those legs to get that thing up, right? Okay, so I'd so start with the tube up, uh, off the ground, All right. okay? And just squat and launch. Squat and launch, there you go. Squat and launch. Two, 
And this is good enough, folks. Okay, got it? Yep. So come towards this side now. And two, back to one. Remember to piston at one, two. Piston, 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 piston. Excellent. Piston, piston, and piston, and piston. Nice. Uh, a little out of breath, right? Yeah. Okay. So what if we just kind of said, well, I got my one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one. No, we're just going to do three, okay? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So I think um, one to two get that pattern, and now we're going to see them. Three to one. Three to one. So he's really got to use the legs, get the coordination, and he's fighting a little bit of top center load there, right? Okay, and four to this side. And that's two at the three position. Three for three. Three position for four, and he's got it. Okay? Now, you're breathing hard, right? Yeah. I can almost call these the burpees of the sure. micro world. Uh, just give me an eight. So I'd always put it up to the 10 next, folks, but we're gonna be a little more kind to him because I want him to feel just the eight and the claw strength to get it really increases a lot with just a little bit of uh, load on that tube. So just go one to two, just for a two each side. Okay, that's good. Is it up, other side? Okay, you did three, that's good. Okay, now let's go, let's go three that side now. And he holds it at the two position and back. Isn't that harder? Much Boy, harder. much harder, right? So that load is much, much harder. Yeah. Let's have fun with them, folks. Now, one to three at this heavy load. Okay. We're just working them out now. One to three, and remember, start with the tube up. Three to one. Three to one. That's our third one. Three to one. Three to one. Three to one. So with this little bit of increase of only two kilograms more, we've made this exercise really metabolic, haven't we? Yeah. Yep. Good job. Power overs. Boy, do I like these things. Uh, continuing with our theme of our last exercise, that I do these side lunge patterns. And we like keeping the foot, knee, and the hip all in the line if we can get that done when we do that, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoulder the tube, and I am going to load it, and then I'm just going to come through center. That's the pattern, folks. So we're going to get these sides going, and uh, I'll do it with two tubes here to demonstrate. So the first one, folks, I'm going to hold it just like this. See, we haven't used this grip yet, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have the tube on my shoulder, and I'm going to do a side lunge and load, and then I'm going to come through center, the tube over my head. I don't have to go straight arms, no. Just keep it over your head, and then I'm going to shoulder it through center and shoulder it. We're just going to step this pattern first, right? Just clearing the head. And then, maybe quick feet, quick feet, quick feet, quick feet, and then maybe power, boom! And I try to jump, jump through center. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a fun one. It's a fun one. Okay. So we're just stepping through center, and that's all it is. So it's not that bad. So he has a tendency to turn his feet out a little bit. I like to see him keep those feet a little more straight ahead when he does these side lunges. That turns the glute on more. And you don't have to go too deep on these. 
Just kind of load, we're powering that over. And we can double count that, one, one, two, two, you know, whatever. Get a good metabolic interval in. We're good. Take a little rest. Okay? So, you warmed up? Yeah. Thanks. All right. So now what we want to think about is that quick feet, quick feet, quick feet, quick feet, right? So we want that agility. We want that, uh, you linebackers and you shortstops and you tennis players. So you want that good side agility, which I like. Let's try that, my friend. And we'll uh, double count it for four. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Quick rest. Now what comes next? Next progression, what I like, is to power. So kind of hop to the middle. So after I've loaded it, as I come, I want to, you know, pop and change feet as I explode off All right. of that right leg if you do a left lunge. So let's try that. And he pull, pushes, 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 and he's getting a little air there. See that, folks? So now this is a really intense plyometric workout. And now you're done. Just give me one, one, and that's enough. Probably enough, right? Yeah. So. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to give it an interval. We're almost about halfway through this workout here. Um, so let's pick up the 10. Okay. We're going to pick up the 10. And again, that's four kilos more, almost double the weight. And we're going to have them do just the power version. Okay, folks? So we progressed. It was just the power version. Heavier weight, so this is for you athletes out there, and he's an athlete, so let's go ahead and we're gonna do a double count for eight. And that's one, one, two, two, three, three, four, just clearing the head, that's all we need to do. And that's five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, and that's enough, right? Ooh. Killer. Imagine doing it with this tube. Imagine doing it for 20 reps. So if you want a killer one minute high intensity interval metabolic that will just wipe you out and wipe your clients out, try a 20 double count with this guy right here. Uh, and trust me, uh, with that load over the head, uh, it's terrific. Heavy tube flips. Great exercise. So think about the tires that you flipped and the old gyms there. So the idea is I'm gonna get into a, use my heaviest tube. So we had a 12 before is our heaviest, but I've got a 16, so we brought that out. And then the idea is on my tail down, head up, right? And then just with kind of light fingers, I'm gonna flip the tube kind of exploding up. Notice my shins are kind of vertical. I'm kind of in this V hip hinge pattern tail down, head up, I'm looking where I'm gonna go, and then I just explode out of it, right? And as I thrust these hip bones forward, folks, that provides the power to get that thing over. If I were in a large gym or outside, I would have someone do this for 20, 30, 50 yards, right? And then we run up, we flip it again, we run up, we flip it again. But we're in a smaller workout space, so, what do I do, is after I flip it, I can run around to the other side, and then I flip it. And I run around to the other side, and I flip it back and forth, and that's even kind of a nice, even better metabolic way to do it, yep. as we do it. So, I'm gonna get out of your way. You can start from there, okay. and maybe cheat it that way a little bit. So, we're gonna do a, he's gonna flip the two, are you grabbing it inside the tube or on the outside? Excellent question. So I put the tube on the inside just like that. And so when I, when I explode and flip, I don't have to use much arm with that because the power is generating from your legs, which are much stronger in your hips, much stronger than your arms. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to generate power from the hips to flip the tube. And that's all it is. And it comes around, gets this hip hinge pattern, 
and we'll do a kind of just yeah, make sure we get it all set and slow first. Good. And then we're coming around. So I want to see this hip hinge pattern. So the tail down, that lumbar is locked in, and he explodes out of those hips, and that provides the power. Okay, so for give me another one. Okay, now quick. Come over here. Boom. Hit it. Boom. Quick run. On this side. Quick. Boom. Quicker, quicker. Get in there. Boom. We're in danger. We've got to get in here. We've got to get in here. Boom. So we race the man in this. Two fight fly around his shoulder all over the place. Who cares? He's just going to go back and forth. He's going to go back and forth. He's going to flip it. And that's good. Heavy two flips. Metabolic. One hundred eighty degree up and overs. Well, kind of another learned skill. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to start this way. So the idea is again, I'm using my hips for power, right? And I'm going to lift the tube up, and I'm going to step. Step. I'm reverse direction, so that's one eighty and then the tube goes back in. Now watch, my left hand is my forward hand. That tells you which direction you're gonna go. So as I go up and over, I'm gonna step into camera, step out, and then I'm ready for my next one. What hand is forward, folks? My right hand, which way am I going? Right, into you, and towards camera. So then I come up, step, step, down. Left hand, so I go left, up, in the camera again, up, and can I start getting quick feet here? Great stuff. Do that with a heavy 20, 30 pound sandbag, which is in the orange section, but we got to lord it with the green section first with the Viper tube. Light tube is enough. So Andres is great, because he held it by his other hand first now. So he held it by his left hand first, so he's going to turn away from camera. And just do it, just step, just carefully step. We don't want to blow any knees out or anything. Good. And let's do maybe do two more. So he's going away from camera, isn't he, folks? He's turning away from camera. So he started with his left hand. Okay, come back to the starting position, facing the other way. I'm sorry, about one way. Yeah, just go face the other way now. This was his starting position, folks. Okay, now I'm gonna have him switch hands, have him with the right hand first. Okay. And it doesn't really matter, but now he's gonna be opening up towards cameras, so just so you know that you always turn to the side of that forward hand. So now I just want him to turn towards camera, so I just switch his hands. And he's just doing a careful step, 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 down. Up, step, step, down. Up, step, step, down. Now pick it up, try to get quick feet. There, boom, boom. And you can almost maybe pop it just by exploding. Good, let's do it for four more. And that's four, three, two, one, 180 up and overs, beautiful. Start slow, get the neural pattern first, use a light weight before you go heavy. Trust me, we'll go heavy later in those sandbags. Side shuffle drags. Again, if I were in a big gym, I would shuffle this thing all the way across the big gym or outside across the big field, but we're in a small place, so we're gonna make do. And uh, side shuffles. So let's pick up the heaviest tube again, folks, which is our 16. And that's our 16. And if I do a side shuffle, folks, I'm going to be shuffling across the room. And I can pick it up one of two ways. I can pick it up with my, this right hand, back hand, we'll call it, tube side. And I can just shuffle. Right, and then I put it down, and then I shuffle the other way, pick it up with his back hand, and I shuffle, right, and I put it down, and I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, 
till your client vomits. No, don't go that far. Uh, or I can pick it up if I, so that's developing what a pec is kind of pulling at, right? In your bicep. What if I change that orientation and I pick it up by the handle, now my back of my shoulder has to work and I can do my side shuffles this way. So two different variations, right? Yeah. And Anders will just cheat you back here a little bit. All right. Good. So first it's uh, opposite. Yeah, hand. it doesn't matter which one you start with, but let's start off with our hand right there. And then you're going to be shuffling that way. He's going to put it down. If you want, I'll have you go off camera just a little more. He's on the camera. He's shuffling out of camera. And he's on the camera. And we're going to go until he vomits. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to have to do that. But let's have to do four more. So that's four, three, two. And we want as much speed as possible. Come on back to me. Come on back to me. Cool, rest. Woo! Right? Yeah. Okay, any side shuffle, it's, it introduces like a plyometric action, and I love this side agility stuff and forward agility, and it's great for sports. And even if I'm 80 years old, boom, I gotta get out of the way of that car backing up out of the grocery store. So uh, we love all these patterns. Let's do the other one. Okay. So now we're gonna hold it using the muscles of the back of the shoulder. And you're going to hold it by into that grip. So there. And now he does the same side shuffle. One, one, two, two, three, three, four. Halfway, halfway, halfway. Keep on going. So that's five, five, six, six. Seven, seven, eight, eight. Tactical training using the big type two muscle tissue under load for extended periods and getting that uh, hydrogen ion acid built up and that and really sucking wind, right? Oh yeah. Good. Excellent job. Side lunge torpedo. What does that look like? Uh, use this one right here, it's a 10. And what if I went ahead and shouldered the tube and I'm just going to translate the tube towards camera. And I'll turn it to the side so you can see it. Okay? So I'm really going to shoulder the tube, translate the tube towards camera, see if I can almost lock out that arm. And maybe I'll do the other side, folks. How about that? So again, shoulder the tube, translate the arm. Let's kind of add to it, though. Uh, let's shoulder the tube from a squat. It's a little more metabolic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here, and I shoulder the tube, translate out, and release. Right? And then I shoulder the tube, translate out, and release. That's about it. I can't go to the other side, can I? <sighs> I get all twisted up. So I'm only going to go to one side. What side do, do I go to? Well, just as we learned our 180s, up and overs, I always go to the side with that forward hand. And I just shoulder out. And with that core uh, strength, and that's all we're building up. So whatever hand is forward, go over that shoulder. Fray times, other shoulder. Okay? I like a heavier load. But we're going to have you do the light one first, just to get the neural pattern. Just a couple times each side. So what hand, folks? His left hand. That means he's going to shoulder to the left. And then he's going to translate out and lock out that arm. And the tube is going to be, again, the center of mass translates away from the body. Shift training. And that's going to get our shoulders strong. Boom. And that's four, right? So let's shift it up here. He changes hands. So now the right hand goes over the right shoulder and he shifts the tube towards me and it goes back. 
Kind of like a little a torpedo. Right? Okay, well, one more for four. Now, we know uh, the concept of torque in loads away from the body. The longer the moment arm with the same weight, the torque increases. So, if we do a heavier weight, let's go with this 10 one now. It's going to be harder. So, again, we'll just do four each side, folks. He shoulders it, translates. Shoulders it, translates. Translate, shift it. That's what I mean by translation. Shoulder, shift it out. And again, when he shoulders it, uh, shoulder it all the way, uh, under so the elbow's back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't like it tight in here. Keep it all the way back. So really kind of shoulder it all the way back and then shift it out. We can slow that down a little bit. So these aren't really for speed as much as just for strength as he puts it out. Okay, that's good. Let's just play with you. Let's just do two more each side uh -huh. in the camera. Okay, for the folks. Oh, no, no, no. No, my friend. Let's use this guy. Oh, all right. So we're just kind of playing with him right now since he's never done any of these before. <clears throat> so, so it's going to go over his left shoulder, right, folks? Tail done, head up. He's got to use it. He shifts it out. And boy, is that a load, isn't it? Yeah. That's a load on the core. As that thing shifts out, that load is really loading that core up. And that's, uh, what's three? Okay, so that's good. Let's change hands now and do three to the other side. So it's gonna go over this shoulder, right, folks? Whip! And he whip, trickle it out. And again, we kind of pull that tube up there. There we go. So with a heavy load, all of a sudden, boom, the whole intensity picks way up especially when you shift loads outside your base support, that intensity just skyrockets with a little more load. Side lunge torpedo. Well, I said side lunge torpedo in the last exercise, but I never did a side lunge, now did I? Well, we need to show you the basics of getting the tube up to the shoulder and translating it out. So simply, we're just gonna add in the side lunge. So again, if we've been working with these really kind of heavy tubes uh, and we've already got Andrus now, so his neural system is already ramped up to this stuff. So again, what it's going to look like is that if I start here with this heavy tube, uh, left hand, it's going to go over to the left shoulder. Boom, right? And then I'm going to do a side lunge. I torpedo, and I can even hold it out there, and then I step back to the center. And then shoulder it, side lunge, translate, step back to center. What if I blend it, huh? What if I blend it, folks? Boom! Right after side lunge. And right in. Right after side lunge. And in. Okay? We don't have to use this, dude. Why don't you use the 10, though? All right. So I'm going to have you two different directions. So first, uh, he's going to do two to the left, where he's going to shoulder it. He's going to do a side lunge. He's going to shift it, and then tube right back through the middle. They just have it go right back to the middle. Shoulder it, step out, and then just don't have to bring it back in. Now just bring it right down, right down through center. Shoulder. So he's blending it now. Right down through center. Shoulder and step, put it out there, right down. Shoulder and step, translates out, right down. Okay? Good, we got it. Let's change hands. Shoulder, step towards me, translate, right down. And he always wants to put it back through center, and that's okay. But just a little more metabolic. Step out. Now blend it, step, shift, boom, right through center. Step, shift, right through center. Step, shift, right through center. And step, shift, 
We're right through center. Okay? Rest, rest. Huff, huff. And let's just do two uh, facing this way, okay? Okay. So our home viewing audience can see different angles. Okay, so left hand, so left shoulder. He steps. The tube shifts. See that, folks? And then right down in. Good. Shoulder it. Shifts right down in. And blend it. And then right away, and out. Right away, out, and in. Okay, good. Other side, just keep even. Yeah. Yeah, what's that? So, right hand is forward. Boom, step, shift to the center. Shoulder, step, shift to the center. Now it's all blended. Shoulder and step, one move, shift. Shoulder and step, shift, right to the center. Shoulder and step, shift, right to the center. One more. Shoulder and step, shift, right to the center. Bingo, got it. <sighs> Clean to push press. Wow, we talked about uh, shift training, putting loads outside our base support, and this is just classic kind of lifting. And I do this because we do want to learn the patterns for an Olympic bar, but do it with a nice viper tube first. Uh, and we're going to be learning uh, those clean patterns and push patterns with sandbags in the orange section also, but it's a good precursor for some of those heavy uh, lifts that we do, like in the red and purple sections, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. And um, again, let's just we'll start with the light tube. And then simply, it's just what most of you probably out there have been exposed to or seen. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to go down, tail down, head up, and I'm in a Kind of a more of a squat versus hip hinge pattern here, though. Mm -hmm. And then as I come up, and there's a springy point down here. There's elastic potential down here, folks, that we want to find. And then we want to use that to drive off. My elbows come out like a little scarecrow. And then, whoop, I tuck them right in to my sides. And I can feel them right in my sides. In an Olympic bar, my elbows would be pointing at you now, wouldn't they? And we release that. So that's the clean, right? Boom. That's all we're going to learn, the clean. And then the next part of that is a push press. So a push press is not, that's a press. It's not very clever. But if I use my legs and the elastic potential yet again of a quarter squat, boom, I launch it right overhead. That's a push press. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's just get that basic pattern down. And we won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but... So clean, push, press to the chest and release. Now, what I'd like to do is actually stop here, Andres. So we don't stop okay. down there. No, stop, stop up here, Stan. Here. I wanted to stop here between each lift. Why? Because it's not a deadlift off the floor, and I want to use the elastic potential of your fascia, your myofascia. So to do that, I can go ahead from here and I go feel, find that springy point, and then I hit it. Mm -hmm. So find the springy point down there, explode out of the legs and hips, and we're just gonna break it down. So after you get it to the chest, there's no hurry. Get set, and then push, press. Here we go. Let's do a clean, clean, push, press. Launch it overhead, lock out the elbows, and there. So tail down, head up. Next one, clean, push, press. And that's all it is, folks. So let's, now that you've got that neural pattern, uh, let's pick maybe the 12, huh? Which one's this? Yep, is there 12? All right. So do I want to start down there? Nope. It's going to start right there. So he's now a little more game. And he's got to really push that heavier load up. But again, this tube only weighs, uh, you know, 12 kilos. So it's not that much. But it's a good way to get the patterns. And just stop right here. Now, Anders, do me a favor. Kind of find out when you go down there, find that point. The tube does not necessarily have to hit the floor. Uh -huh. But find out where your glutes feel springy. So it's where the hands and the glutes cross at this gluteal fold, 
And in there, folks, that's going to be a good powerhouse uh, springy point to access the elastic potential of our glutes and our hams. Push, press. Good. Now let's turn to the side. And let's do four again. So he's going to find the springy point down here with his clean. His elbows go out and he tucks them in and then push, press. Again, he uses the, the elastic potential of his uh, legs, his hips, as he thrusts it overhead. Rest here. Clean, push, press. Good. And then you'll see in the orange section with the sandbags, we're going to hit you up with maybe like a 60 pound sandbag and do a lot of that stuff. So we're just going to increase the loads. And then finally, you're ready with these good neural patterns down to hit those Olympic bars hard if you want to, uh, even though I'm not a super fan of Olympic bars, as you'll read about in my book, uh, but they do have their place. So that's it. Offset snatch with reverse lunge. Well, what's going on here? Now a snatch is I want to get the weight from the floor all the way over my head in one motion, okay? So I can do that by again, tail down, head up. And I kind of put it all the way up. But notice I kind of want to duck under like that push press right away. So if I go, I kind of lock it out, tuck under it. You see the Olympic lifters, and they do this all the time, but perhaps with a super light load, folks. Just get the neural pattern down. But mine says reverse lunge, doesn't it? Notice how I kind of want to tuck under it. And the weight, as my hips are driving this thing up, it's got the momentum from my legs and hips. My arms really aren't doing anything. All I have to do is kind of basically drop under it, boom. And I've got my reverse lunge pattern. Come to standing, to the chest, reverse. So I'm gonna do this all at once. Boom. Uh, that's my favorite way to snatch. Not with two feet, but actually, going back. So we're going to learn that later, but we're going to practice the neural patterns here. So tail down, head up, and he's just going to drive it up and kind of do a, yeah, tuck that kind of push press as we, we just learned that push press pattern. So as I drive it up for a snatch, and again, it's, uh, it doesn't come away from the body, it comes up, and then my wrists kind of flick at the top. Yeah, and actually I kind of like, and this is triple extension, right folks? Triple extension. The ankles, the knees, and the hips. That's triple extension, and Andres just showed us where he <clears throat> actually did an explosive power out of that. And then he bent his knees and caught it at the top. Love it. I love that. Okay? That's good. Now, uh, we can still use that explosion, but just drop the foot back. And when you go back in that reverse lunge, have kind of a, think of a wider stance, okay? Yeah, think of that wider stance back there. And maybe just do four to one side. Keep it over your head. Uh -oh. Come to standing. standing. I, then I like to control it. So again, keep control. Your arms are locked out. Boom. Okay, now let's do reverse lunge. Here we go. Arms are locked out. Come to standing, control it, and then eccentrically release it under control. Two. Three. Do one more for me this side. Four. Okay, other leg, here we go. Find that springy point. Again, the hips exploded overhead in one motion. Boom. Never try to remember to get those scarecrow arms out and just flick it over the top there. Boom. 
We go into that nice deep reverse lunge pattern. It's really cool looking. And again, these are my favorite way to do a snatch. I don't know why. I also like a single arm snatch. We'll learn that later. Uh, just do two and two. This side, this direction for us. Just so even the home viewing audience can see his nice deep lunge back there. So here we go. And he's going to snatch overhead. Good. And he explodes from those feet. Remember, he's going to stop here, but not down at the floor. Stop there. And just a springy point down there as you explode. There. Okay? Other side, two maybe. How about that? Boom! Give me one more. Boom! Nice. Huge power. Um, love it. Look great. Thank you. Offset snatch with reverse lunge. Oh, I just said that in the last exercise, and we didn't do any offset. We just did the reverse lunge. Why, yet again, you need to know that basics uh, of the uh, snatch uh, using the neutral grip, okay? But now, with the Viper tubes, because we can offset them, I like putting an eccentric load on the body. And again, you would only do this with lighter tubes, and we would never do something like this with like an Olympic bar, just be crazy and stupid. But with a Viper tube, we can actually do an offset uh, load on it. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did last exercise, Andres, right. and we'll do four each side this way and four each side this way. Okay. And, this but, but this way, he's going to um, hold it offset, right? So he's gonna load it onto one side where, yeah, so now we have the load off to one side of him, right? And that's what we're gonna do. So and again, if it's a heavier tube, uh, you're gonna feel that, that your body has to fight that through the core. And that is going to make us, from a traditional lift pattern within the base support, this introduces the little bit of shift training outside the base support, and that's why we're doing it. But again, we're not going to go crazy on it. So let's actually do it with the, with the eight. So we're just going to go up one for you. And, right, and so, yeah, so we'll just do, um, so maybe just show the home viewing audience how you're holding it here, there. And so this is this off-center load, his torque, that his body is going to have to deal with. And um, let's just do two and two. Okay. Because it's the same as last exercise, folks. We're just holding it offset pattern. And here it is. It's just going to go down and he's going to explode up. Boom. A little different, isn't it? Yeah. Just let her wait. He explodes for two. Now, uh, let's flip the two. Let's use the same way. There you go. He just shifted it. So now the weight's on. The, this side, as opposed to that side, same leg, same leg, two times. It threw him off, didn't it, folks? It threw him off. Boom. Okay. Put it down. Okay. Now we can face the home viewing audience for our last. So he did, he did his right leg. Now he's going to do his left leg towards you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and um, let's just shift it again one more time. Let's go on the other side. And he's supposed to do his left leg. So we're going to do two with the load this side, two with the load this side. All left leg. Here we go. Boom. So his body's trying to figure this stuff out, right? Boom. Okay, that's two. Let's shift it. Now the, the off-center load is here. Good. See that? He has to fight that. We love that. We love the fact that the body has to fight and self-organize, figure it out. I believe that I mixed up the leg. I switched legs. Oh, okay. Well, we're doing that. You know, don't, don't screw it up, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Get with the program. Boom. Beautiful. So there, we've taken our traditional uh, split stance, you know, reverse lunge uh, snatch, and we introduced an off-center load to that. And that's how we're going to get even more country strong. Forward fire victim crawl. Uh, but in fact, um, in this space, we're going to do the two exercises together, the forward and the reverse fire victim crawl. And go back to the animal crawl patterns in the blue to really get your core 
and get all your movement patterns set up before you uh, do this exercise. Uh, and again, it, it, the, my book is, uh, has a progression in it. It will bring you along. Uh, of course, Mr. Andrus is doing all this stuff cold, so good for him. But what is it? Is that we're pretending that we're in a fire, and there's a smoke layer about right here, but underneath there's air that we can breathe. And we got to get our little brother or sister out of uh, the fire, or if you're a tactical athlete, you're doing uh, building crawl patterns, strength patterns uh, to get low in firefights, or for you firefighters, we just told you what you're there for. So here we go. I can actually get into my ice flow crawl pattern, and I'm like a little bear, right? Mm -hmm. But I can then just go ahead and just pull this thing across. But then we're just going to go reverse again. And I'm just going to pull this thing along. And if I were in a really big gym, I'd have to pull it all the way across and all the way back, back and forth and back and forth. But we're just going to go back and forth here a couple times. Trust me, huh, it'll get you a little out of breath yeah. just by doing a couple, okay? So uh, we're just going to see Mr. Andres turn himself into a little bear. He's going to crawl over it. And I'm not going to really tell him. He's got to figure out how to pull his victim out of the fire. There he's going to crawl out of frame there. That's good. He's crawling back. There he goes. One more time up and back, maybe. And you want to keep your tail low if you can. Try to keep your tail low on these things. And again, crawl patterns are really metabolic. You really got a lot of great stuff going just with your body weight. Now we're just dragging a load with that. And uh, there it is. Fire victim, crawl patterns, forward and reverse. Side crab crawl. I like crabs. I'm a former maritime guy. So let's get our poor little victim here. And crabs walk to the side, don't they, folks? In the room back here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get over in a plank push-up position. And again, if I pull my tube, I can pull it a couple ways. I can pull it with this hand, right? And I'll do it back. So I'm pulling it with my trail hand, and keep, keep that tail down if you can, or I can pull it with my lead hand, boom, okay, boom, lead hand, and we're just going back and forth, and you get the idea. So, heavy tubes are good, a little friction down there, doesn't hurt at all. So let's go. All right. So he's going to walk like a crab to the side. He's pulling with his trail hand. And then come on back. Trail hand, which is his left. Again, a lot of things like to do all variations. Now, do it. Uh, lead hand? Yeah, lead hand, yeah. Lead hand. And he kind of turned that wrist around, didn't he? Come on back. There. So I have to let his spark trying to figure it out. Let's go down and back again. Lead hand. Lead hand. Come on back with lead hand. Lead hand. Okay, good enough. Uh, there you go, folks. Uh, side crab crawls. Uh, two variations with your lead hand and your trail hand. Keep your tail down. Side clings. Now look, if you've ever, ever done laundry in your life and you had a wet laundry basket full of wet clothes, Actually, the laundry basket is probably dry, but the clothes are wet, and they're very heavy, right, folks? And if you bend over, unsupported forward flexion, 
you are gonna blow out your back and lumbar. You're putting a twist to your lumbar, it's unsupported forward flexion, and that is bad. Bad dog. So, what we wanna do is learn to pick up loads heavy that are to our side, but protect our lumbar. That's the whole idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have actually a very kind of narrow stance here, and that's gonna allow me to squat and grab a load, and then I'm just gonna be able to do a clean, and no matter what side that is, I've got it. Zoom so from the side, kind of a narrow stance, knees are kind of together, tail down, head up, and hope that my lumbar is okay for you guys. And I go down to either side, I can take a load outside my body, shift it into my base of support, and protect my lumbar. That's it. Right. So, pick up maybe the 10 or something. All right. And so, because of the way we can go, so it, it's a heavy load to his left. So I like a kind of narrower stance, and then he just picks it up, cleans it, and then he can put it down to the side. And maybe not go all the way down to the floor, Mr. Andres. All right. Just kind of find that springy point down there, and find that springy point down there. Good, now face me, all right? And uh, what I want to do, folks, is, um, no, actually turn around first, all right? And I'm gonna have him do it again, and we're gonna watch his lumbar here, okay? So we wanna make sure and prove to ourselves that we can do this with somewhat protection of that lumbar. And I don't wanna see that lumbar, it's gonna move a little bit, but not too much. Lumbars are big structural blocks to our body, and trust me, they hate big torsion and stuff like that. We wanna lock in that lumbar and protect it. That's why I always say terms like tail down, head up, to lock in that lumbar. So turn around, Andres. Do it again just so we can kind of focus on his lumbar. And why are we doing this? Because in the orange section, I've got sandbags. I mentioned that three or four times a day. And we put a load, a big heavy load here so we can lift a big like 60, 50 pound load. And we can just do a, maybe a nice metabolic interval, uh, shifting these loads to a clean. Two more. And that still makes you huffy, right? Anytime we do move the big joints of the body, we get puffy and it's metabolic. And folks, Viper Tube Games and Mr. Andres, I thank you for helping us out today. My pleasure, thank you.